Welcome back. I'm talking to Neil Sanders about social media and in particular Facebook. And he was just pointing out that this document, uh, the Kubark document, which is a, a torture manual, uh, recommends overstimulation and isolation as a means of breaking down someone. And we find both of these phenomena in social media. Uh, and we're going to come on to whether or not social media is an orchestration rather than just some accident that people happen to have uh, let's say developed through their own social interaction it's this you believe this f it's far more sinister than that the gist of it is that basically um, there were certain people that put in say like half a million I think it's I think it's Peter Tile he put in fifty thousand five hundred thousand dollars which you know half it's a, it's a substantial amount of money and basically was named as like one of the big sort of like brokers in Facebook or whatever. What's bizarre is that basically there was a chap called James Breyer um, who gave about 12.7 million um, during the initial setup of, of Facebook. And he's barely mentioned. He's obviously a board member or whatever. And what's bizarre is that at the time he was, um, he was approached by a chap called Gilman Louis, and there seems to be some sort of cross-contamination of companies and boards, you know, moving money from here to here. Uh, James Brown wasn't the only person. There's a, there's a couple of people that basically, the gist of it seems to be that as soon as these people have invested into Facebook, they appear to have got either some financial aid or been moved into a position of uh, shareholder status for a company called InQtel. Now, InQtel, uh, is uh, admittedly it's the CIA's multimedia arm. So basically, mostly concerned with data mining. That's what's all the other projects that they do. And it just seems very, very strange that basically you've got these people who are connected to a CIA company helping to set up this um, uh, medium that just so happens to be the most impressive data mining tool that we've ever seen. People, as I say, we're talking, it's changed people's behavior to the point where talking about yourself incessantly is no longer seen as something that a mad person would do. It's seen as the norm. So we've got people who are linked to the CIA mm. who are key people in both financing and setting up Facebook. It certainly would appear so. And then there's, there's people like Sean Parker as well, who was uh, one of the, the initial people with Zuckerberg that was setting it up. He's Justin Timberlake in the film. Apparently, he was uh, like a master code breaker or a master sort of like uh, hacker or, or whatever. Um, for the CIA, basically by the time he was 16. Mm. Um, then mysteriously got involved in Facebook. And then I think he's involved in Spotify now. Uh, I, I may have got that wrong. It, it, you know, it's one of these sort of music this things. Music sharing. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Or, or some, he's, he's, he's involved with some significant big mm. player in, mm. in sort of the, the uh, world of uh, the internet. Um, and then you sort of combine that with the, the, the fact that the, it certainly seems to mimic the ideas of the QBark document as well. Um, and it, it's, it starts to look rather strange, basically. Right. It's interesting, because if, if you go back 10 years, I would imagine and do a profile of people's internet use. Mm. I would argue that people used a variety of different websites. Yeah. And I, I would argue now most people use no more than two or three websites. Some people's entire internet interaction is just with Facebook. They, yeah. they, they see the internet as being Facebook. Yeah. So they've, what they've done is they've created this area on the internet and they've sucked many, many people into it so that they're then contained in this one website. Cause or Facebook Instagram or, or Twitter, but the, the big yeah. three, yeah, yeah. So certainly. I mean, this is the problem. I mean, I can, don't get me wrong, you know, I, I get the point of social media. I've got friends that live abroad and stuff like that. You can find out about fabulous bands like Turn Barrel and stuff like that. Um, so that, that, that's really good. Um, but I'm always reminded of the Tony Hancock quote, you know, from the Radio Ham. It's a marvelous invention, this. Marvelous. Friends all over the world, all over the world, not in this country, but all over the world, mind. Right. And that, that's the point. The problem So, is this was a, a Tony Hancock, so for, for younger viewers, was a, a, he was a 1960s comedian. On the but radio. The, yeah. ra the radio is like a podcast, but not on the internet. Right. <laughs> but very, very popular at the time, Tony Hancock. Yeah. Uh, and he's, he, he's actually making a joke about ham radio. Yeah, and the fact that, again, this social media actually isolates you more and more, basically. Right, right. So, you know, uh, th this is the point. There are positive aspects of all of these things. And if you, it means that you get to chat to your friends. That's great, OK? The problem is when that becomes your only outlet. That, that's worrying. S so I, I'll just ask you this. I mean, it, it's probably, I don't think you know the absolute answer, but just your own feeling mm -hmm. as to how much orchestration was there or is there in the setting up and manipulation of Facebook uh, and or how much of it is just customer driven? 
Is it because people would say, well, it's just giving people what they want, whereas you would argue, no, it's not. It's being manipulated from the top down to s to steer people to to, to into overstimulation and isolation, and therefore they're being dealt with, or they're being mind controlled, or their thoughts are being controlled. I think it's interesting that basically the circumstances that are made by s uh, by social media seem to encourage this type of behaviour. Um, and if it's if it's an accident, then you know it's it's a bit a bit of a sort of a strange uh, concern. And that yeah, and, and perhaps at this point, uh, Neil, we can just put up some of these images that you emailed to me about um, soul stealing mm. and, and what. And it's, I, I believe it's a French artist. I, I'm not entirely sure of the name, but essentially what they're showing is is people being sucked into their uh, into their smartphones, like as if it's like a portal, basically. And I, I think the the um, exhibition is called Soul Stealing or something right. like that. But it's just a, a quite nice visual representation of, of how wrapped up in these very unimportant, but, but everything about them provides you with security. It makes the world smaller and safer and you know what's going off in it. Right. And, and as I say, it's that sort of umbilical cord, um, duvet over the head sort of yeah, escape. Uh, and, and these other images which show the, the, the smartphone devices not there, not present, yeah, yeah, showing the, you what's... The what separation afforded and how basically this social media is causing complete, um, you know, disinterest in, in those that are in your immediate social circle. They're basically, again, you've probably seen it and you're going to show them, yeah. people just staring at their phones, but the, it looks bizarre when you remove the phones because they're, they're interested in, you know, in, in, in something mm. that's not there. Mm and ignoring the world around them, right. basically. And, but some people would say, so what? I'll put that question to you. So, so what if they're wrapped up in something which is in their hand? Is that on its own, is that bad? Um, depends what you want to do with yourself, basically. It's annoying. Y you yeah. know, people moan about, say, zombie apocalypse and stuff like that. You go into restaurants or you go in the pub or something and five people will sit down. What's that, that thing that's floating around at the minute? Ah, oh, on holidays, are you? Well, where are you kids going to go and look mm. at your phones today? Y yeah, I, I was on a bus mm. a few years ago, and uh, it was snowing really bad. And this was in the northeast, a uh, place called Wickham. Mm. And it was, the bus was going down a bank. And uh, I'm thinking, this, this driver is going to crash. And he, he, he went into a skid, and he, he managed to pull it round, right, and almost crashed. Mm. And my heart was like this. And I looked round as if t to the rest of the people on the bus, bus, as if to say, "Wow, did anyone else see that?" No. And everyone on the bus was sitting looking at a device, and they hadn't seen anything. That it, they hadn't. They didn't seen it. If you'd have looked at the driver, he'd have been doing this. <laughs> Nearly crashed. <Yeah>. Lol. <laughs> that, that's yeah. 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 <laughs> because that's people's output. Yeah. Why do people put what they've had for dinner? Every time somebody puts, ooh, beans on toast for dinner, I'm tempted to send them a, a picture of what I had for dinner two days ago. Yeah. Yeah. Quite. Which brings us on to Twitter beef. Mm. What is that, Neil? Twitter beef, I mean, it, it, it pertains particularly to, uh, to say, Twitter. I mean, the, the point Be is... Beef meaning you're annoyed with something. Yeah, like a, a fight that's sort of uh, embroiled on social media. It doesn't have to be Twitter. It could be, you know, anything. To criticise somebody online, basically, it's all, it's all usually kind of emotionless or, or trolling. You've either done it just to be just to upset somebody or just because, meh, meh, there's my two path and, and you've gone. Now, for the person who's criticised, that's there forever. You're not there, you've gone. But basically, mm. it's not always just seen as a difference of opinion. It's seen as an attack on their character, an attack on their personality. And because of what we talked about, about this thing, how bizarrely, despite the fact that you're on your own, you have an audience of peers when you're on, on, online. Mm. So two things happen. A, you've just been insulted and attacked in public. Mm. And B, you're worried about losing face in front of this whole you know, crowd of people that, that respect. So essentially, you've, you've attacked these people on a public forum. You've just, it's like a drive-by heckling. It's like driving by, yeah. your, your sports team is so par, and going away. Drive-by like, heckling. Yeah, it, it happens in the hood. Um, the other point is that basically social media, it appears to exist in like a vacuum because of these, these interactions that you've got. It's got it's like its own little world. And so you get hurt up in that. Somebody says, yeah, you think this. Well, I tell you what, mate, you're stupid. Blah 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 blah. Till you bump into that person mm. in real life. Little. Yeah, and they knock your teeth out. People tend to lose their heads when they're online and start making 
statements that could be considered illegal or out of the context of social media. You won't run up to, I always say, I tend to say, don't put anything on social media that you won't be comfortable shouting out your front window. Mm -hmm. Right, Th then you'll probably be okay. Well, the same applies with images, Neil. Mm. I would say don't put anything on social media that you wouldn't put on a billboard, uh, you know, like all of your family photographs, for example. You said that that, that, that you have this isolation which gives yeah. you a, a level You're of security. You're brave behind the screen. Yeah. But then s it can spill over into the real world and you end up either in court or, yeah, in, a, yeah. or in a fight or, in, or getting arrested. Some of it is ridiculous. I remember during the riots and stuff like that, somebody put, some like 14 year old lad put something along the lines of, uh, yeah, we should go down and like set fire to something like that. Totally non committal, like right. really sort of silly. And he and was he arrested. Got, I he? think he got something like two years for really? it. Yeah, you got to do it yeah. ludicrous. Right. That's obviously ludicrous. But if you put, I'm going to come round to your house or put someone's address online or say I'm going to kill you or whatever, anything like that. Mm. It doesn't matter whether you say that face to face, whether you do it via text, whether you write them a letter. It would still be illegal just because you're on Facebook doesn't mean that you have carte blanche to threaten someone's children mm. or to do something like that. But this is the point. You get caught up in this thing mm. and then the next morning, Hello, hello, hello. Did you make this statement on Facebook? And all of a sudden, it's brought into glaring reality. But, but it, I mean, do the pl are the police really interested in? I mean, yes. I, 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 it's, it's. I would have thought the, the the police now get calls every day about complaints on Facebook. There was a video that was out. Um, and this is a few years old. It was called "Keep Snitching." But the point was that basically people tend to they watch social media. You know, if you're on there bragging, look at this money that I got from selling drugs, All right. look at this, they'll watch that and they'll kick your door off. This is the other point, like people, th that's that isolation. Mm. How many videos have you seen and stuff like that, uh, of people waving guns around and stuff like, you know, rap videos and stuff like that. And then like Bobby Schmurder, uh, my boy caught a body about a week ago. Well, guess where they were a week later? They were in prison because you, you're exposing yourself on, on this thing, it, it, often to show off or whatever. All right, Neil, well, uh, we'll, we'll, we're going to go for another break and we'll, we'll discuss some more awful behaviour after this.